Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to use camera movements in After Effects, step by step. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and turn on the notification bell so you'll be the first to know when new tutorials are released, and you'll be supporting the channel as well. Alright then, let's jump right in. First, let's create a new composition. Click on the New Composition button in the top left corner. A Composition Settings window will appear. In the Name field, you can type any name you want for your project. I'll set the composition size to 1920 by 1080 and the frame rate to 30 FPS. You can also adjust the duration based on your project needs. Once everything is set, click OK to create your composition. Now, let's drag and drop our visuals from the project panel into the composition area. This way, all the images we'll be using will be added directly to our composition. Here, we can see that our stadium background image is larger than the composition size. To fix this, select the Stadium layer, then go to the Transform menu and choose Fit to Comp. This will automatically adjust the image to perfectly fit within the composition. To make our stadium image look more dynamic, let's add a glow effect to the stadium lights. First, go to the Effects and Presets panel and apply the glow effect to the stadium layer. As you can see, the light glow looks a bit too sharp right now. Let's fix that by adjusting a few settings. Set the glow radius to 60. This will soften the edges of the light. Then, set the glow threshold to 80. This makes the glow effect look more natural and perfectly matched with the stadium layer. Finally, let's add the CC vignette effect to our stadium image. This effect slightly darkens the edges of the frame, helping the viewer's attention stay focused on the center of the scene. It's a subtle touch, but it really enhances the overall look. I personally love this effect. It adds a strong cinematic feel and makes the scene look much more engaging. Now, let's arrange our visuals in the right order within the composition. Positioning each image correctly helps keep the overall scene balanced and visually appealing. Take a bit of time here to make sure everything sits where it should. That's what gives the scene a clean, professional look. As I line up the visuals, Pay attention to how I'm keeping the depth and perspective consistent. The background elements should stay further away, while the foreground details appear closer to the viewer. Getting this set up right will make our camera movement look much more realistic and dynamic later on. Now, to create a 3D camera movement, we need to make all our layers 3D enabled. Select all the layers and click the 3D cube icon next to each one. This step allows our layers to have depth and respond to camera movement. From this point on, everything in the scene will behave as if it exists in real 3D space. Perfect! With all layers selected, press P on your keyboard to open the position settings. This allows us to control exactly where each layer is positioned in the scene. This way, when we add camera movement, every element will stay precisely where we want it. Now, we'll position our visuals along the Z-axis. Starting from the last layer, we make sure each visual is at a different distance from the others. This step is crucial to create a sense of depth in the scene. We enter the appropriate values for each layer to maintain proper control. This ensures that when we add camera movement, the scene will feel like a real 3D space. Now, since we moved our visuals along the Z-axis, the layers naturally appear smaller. To fix this, select All Layers and press S on your keyboard to open the scale settings. Then, starting from the last layer, adjust the scale values to enlarge them appropriately. After that, modify the position settings to bring the visuals back to their original placement in the scene. This way, we maintain the sense of depth while keeping the visuals at the right size. Now, let's add a camera to our scene. Go to the Layer panel at the top and select New Arrow Camera. I'll be using my preferred camera settings for this tutorial, but feel free to experiment with different settings if you like. Once everything is set, click OK to create the camera. To add movement to our camera, we need a null object. Select the camera layer, then right-click and choose Camera Create Null Object. This creates a null object linked to our camera's settings. Now, we can use this null object to move the camera more easily and with full control. 
With a null object selected, press P on your keyboard to open the position settings. This makes it much easier to add movement to our camera. Now, adjust the values to create camera movement in the desired direction and speed. This step will make our scene look much more dynamic and cinematic. Now, let's move our camera closer along the Z-axis. Our goal is to make sure the farthest layer remains visible in the camera view. Adjust the position values of the null object to control the scene's depth and appearance. This ensures that during camera movement, all layers appear in the correct perspective and as intended. Great, now we can animate our camera. First, add a keyframe to the position property. Then, move forward to frame 90 and add another keyframe. This ensures that the camera's final position appears exactly as we want it in the scene. Now, I go back to the first keyframe and adjust the position values so the layer starts outside the camera view. This way, at the beginning of the scene, the camera will smoothly move into the visuals. Now, let's select the keyframes we created and apply Easy Ease. This will make the camera movement much smoother and more natural. Next, open the graph editor to fine-tune the camera's speed. Here, we adjust the timing so the camera starts slow, speeds up in the middle, and slows down at the end. This technique gives our scene a more professional and cinematic flow. Now, move forward 90 frames on the timeline. Adjust the camera's position so that the other layer becomes visible in the frame. To ensure the camera movement maintains the same speed, open the graph editor and adjust the speed curve. This way, the camera movement in the scene will remain smooth and consistent. Now, we'll repeat the same steps for all layers. To keep the video from being too long, we're speeding up this section slightly. Once this process is complete, we'll continue from where we left off with the camera movement. If you've watched the video this far, please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications. This way, I stay motivated to create more tutorial videos and bring you even more helpful content. Now, let's do a short preview render to see how our animation looks. This allows us to identify any mistakes or missing elements and make the necessary corrections. Let's check if the animation flows smoothly, the camera movements are correct, and the scene looks as intended. Finally, let's enable the camera's blur feature. As the camera moves away, the distant layers will become slightly blurred, directing the viewer's attention to the foreground visuals. This technique gives our scene a much more cinematic and professional look. To apply this effect, first open the camera settings and enable depth of field. Then, add keyframes to the focus distance, aperture, and blur levels properties. To avoid an overly strong blur effect, set the blur level to 60. This way, distant layers will be slightly blurred, directing the viewer's attention to the foreground visuals. Now, move to the camera's final position. At this point, since the camera hasn't moved much, the blur settings remain the same. Therefore, we add a new keyframe with the same blur level's values. This ensures the blur in the scene stays consistent and looks natural. Now, move to the next keyframe and adjust the blur settings to fit the scene. Take your time here and fine-tune the blur values carefully. This will create a much more natural and impressive result. Remember, small adjustments can greatly enhance the cinematic quality of your scene. Now, move to the next keyframe, and we can see that the blur effect fits perfectly on our layer. At this point, there's no need to adjust the blur settings. The effect already achieves the desired look. Here, it's important to note that a proper depth of field and blur can enhance the focal point and add a strong sense of depth. Sometimes, rather than tweaking settings endlessly, leaving the effect natural is the best choice. This ensures our scene is both visually pleasing and maintains a cinematic flow with the camera movement. Now, we're adding the final touches to our scene. Select all layers and enable the blur feature. This way, as the visuals move, they will become slightly blurred, giving the scene a much more realistic and cinematic look. Small details like this greatly enhance the professional quality of the scene. And that's our scene complete. I hope this video helped you learn 3D camera movements and blur effects in After Effects. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and turn on notifications. 
This keeps me motivated to create more tutorial content. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.